Welcome to this video in my series on Windows Server 2012. This one showing the new live migration feature in Hyper-V version 3 which is a shared nothing live migration feature. So the two hosts that I'm going to use don't share any storage or anything, they're just on the same IP network. So I've started the new server manager and we can see that I have two computers, one called primary and a second one called secondary and we can see they're both being registered as being Hyper-V hosts. So if I launch the Hyper-V management console we should be able to see the two hosts in the uh, MMC and we can see that I have a virtual machine called Demo for Live Migration. So by opening that up and connecting to it we should be able to see that the virtual machine is actually running. So when we get the desktop back for the machine what we'll then do is we'll go into the configuration for the two Hyper-V hosts so that we can enable live migration and then we will live migrate the virtual machine from one computer to another. So first of all under the Hyper-V settings we now have a new live migration section which enables me to enable live migration. I can then choose my authentication mechanism so if I choose cred SSP that means I have to initiate the live migration from the source Hyper-V host. If I choose to use Kerberos um, that allows me to build a slightly more secure environment and I can actually control um, the machines that are going to be able to uh, initiate uh, live migration. So you'd go into Active Directory and set the constrained delegation for CIFS and for virtual uh, machine migration for the source and destination machines. I also had the option of choosing the number of concurrent live migrations as you'll see here. Uh, there's no limit to the number of current migrations and I can also choose the IP network that I'd like to migrate across so I can set up a dedicated live migration network. These machines are just sitting on a 100 meg a bit network so the performance isn't going to be um, exceedingly fast. Um, bear in mind as, because they have uh, no shared storage between them we'll have to move all of the disk subsystem uh, as well. So just to try and sh demonstrate that obviously uh, we're going to have continuous connectivity I'll just start off a, a, contiguous, a continuous ping so we can see obviously connectivity to the system and with all live migrations normally what you see is that uh, you lose one ping message during the migration and hopefully we should see something very similar to that. So I'm going to right click on the machine and choose to hit move and I'm going to choose to move the virtual machine and this will also move its storage if required. There is also as you can see an option just to move storage if that's all I wanted to do. Um, so in this instance I can specify the computer name of the destination Hyper-V host so in this case it's called secondary and I can then uh, choose whether I want to move all the data files to a single folder um, or move them to different folders. So in my instance I'm going to move all the new VHDX files to the same folder. So I'm just going to specify the destination folder that I'd like the virtual machine to be moved to and then just press next. gives me a summary and then I can initiate the move process. So pressing finish and it will actually start to move the virtual machine from one host to another. So the first process is actually the migration of the VHD files. So we're actually in the background now copying the VHD files from uh, Hyper-V host called primary to the Hyper-V host called secondary. So that's actually going on. So just while we're uh, waiting for it to move we'll just go and sign in with a remote desktop session into the virtual machine and then we'll interact with the virtual machine just to demonstrate that um, the machine is live. So hopefully we'll get that connection established in, a, in uh, one or two seconds. So again just to make sure that you can see what's going on I'll just put it in a bit of a window um, so we can see activities uh, during that pr uh, process. So you can see the machine is uh, responding and reactive, got the ping messages uh, being generated, I'm interacting with the machine, firing up various windows and sort of connecting to that system. So, so hopefully you can see the machine is fairly responsive while the migration is going on in, in the background. As part of the uh, migration process in the Hyper-V console uh, we do get some status messages and we'll see those uh, status messages in the moment so we can see how far through the migration process is and as you'd expect obviously the, the more active a machine is um, and, and obviously the bigger the vi virtual hard disk files are um, the more uh, time it will take to migrate the machine. From the point of view of Hyper-V we don't care where the, the source 
and the destination Hyper-V servers are or their configuration. So this could be standalone Hyper-V server into a Windows cluster. This could be from a Windows cluster to standalone or cluster to cluster. We, we really don't mind. So we can see at the moment we're um, about 8% through the migration um, and we can see on the destination system there's no sign of the virtual machine at this moment in time. So we just obviously let that carry on and keep migrating the system. Um, <coughs> It is important, obviously, live migration is used only for planned activities, so this wouldn't obviously give me any level of protection uh, if I actually had a physical Hyper-V host failure. Um, I would still need the clustering engine to provide me with that level of high availability, but this does give me the ability obviously, to move systems about under planned control uh, scenarios. So hopefully we should be getting uh, fairly close to the migration process completing, so you can still see that I'm interacting with the machine. And hopefully we'll see, um, we'll have a, an actual move. So the machine's just moved across and I'm still completely working with the machine. There's that one ping message that timed out. We can see on the source Hyper-V host that the uh, virtual machine has disappeared. If I go to the secondary system, we can see the virtual machine is now there. And again, obviously, if I wanted to move it back, um, I, I could do that as well. I could right click on the machine and move it back to the original host. And we can still see that it's working. One thing that has been resolved with Hyper-V now is if I was using the Hyper-V connection window, um, that would have also maintained its connection. So if I'd migrated the machine and rather than use a remote desktop session, actually uh, use the console connection in the Hyper-V manager, that connection would have been maintained. I hope this video has been useful for you. Thank you very much and please look forward to uh, viewing some of my other Hyper-V videos. Thank you.